Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to my Flutter layout application tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how we can build out a Flutter application that has multiple pages. I also want to talk about some of the new Flutter 2.0 features and I want to show you guys some tools that will help you get started with the Flutter framework. So in the description I'm going to link this particular page. This page is on the Flutter GitHub and it talks about some of the changes that are coming into the Dart 2 introduction. We've got strong compile time type checks which is now a default in Dart rather than having to enable strong mode. And there are some new things in Flutter. For instance you don't have to use the new keyword when you're creating a new object. And you can see here their example they're creating a new text without the new keyword. And there of course are some other smaller changes. Also this little document talks about how you can get the preview build working which is what I'll be using in this tutorial. So you can follow along with it and get it working for IDEA IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code or whatever you're using. Also I came across this tool it's called the Flutter Studio. This tool allows us to sort of drag and drop some of the elements onto our user interface and it will generate the code that would be used to create this particular application user interface. So for instance say I want to change the name here I can click on it and then I can click text and then I can just type in a new name so let's say layout app. I want to have say a center element I'll put that in there then I can switch over to widgets and I can get a raised button and put it in the center and now you can see the code is sort of building out as I'm doing all of this. For any of you guys who are sort of struggling with figuring out how things are laid out inside of Flutter and how you can sort of visualize these elements I do recommend going and checking out Flutter Studio and I will of course link this in the description as well. Alright so with that out of the way now let's get into coding our application. So I've stripped all of the boilerplate out of our application and we just have our main function and then our myapp class. Okay so first let's create our theme data. So I'm just going to define a final variable at the top and of course this is type theme data. So we create a new theme data object and you can see I'm not using the new keyword because of the new features from Dart 2 which is kind of nice. It sort of strips away some of the verboseness of the code. And then inside of this I'm just going to define the canvas color which will be a light green accent. Then we'll jump into our myapp class and we'll override the build function. And we'll have it return a scaffold object. And inside of our scaffold we'll create a body. We'll make it a center and then we'll add a child of a flat button. We'll give this an unpressed listener and we'll just pass an anonymous function in this case. And then of course our flat button will also have a child because we want to have text on the button itself. Inside of our unpressed anonymous function we want to call navigator.push and then we'll pass in our context. And then we'll pass in a second page which we're just going to call page 2. We want to create the text for the button and we're just going to say go to page 2. So the user will open up there will be a button it will be sitting in the center of the screen. They click the button and it will move on to the second page. With our page 2 class we want to extend material page route. And this is the class that will allow us to essentially replace the entire screen with a new transitional screen. When we click the button our default page is then replaced with our new page and our original myapp page will stay in memory. There are ways of kicking it out of memory. We could set the maintain state property to false if we wanted to. But for now we're just going to leave it in memory because it's not really going to be that big of a memory sink. Also you'll notice that we're passing something into our material page route. This null just signifies that the actual route itself is not going to return anything. Since we don't have any state that we want to pass from page 2 back to the myapp page we're just going to return null. In our page 2 we actually build out the page itself inside of the constructor for page 2. So we take page 2's constructor and if we had some properties that we wanted to pass into page 2 we'd pass them through the constructor. And then we have our extension which is the super extension. And we want to call specifically on the builder property of the material page route. And of course we pass in our build context which is our CTX. And then inside of this we can then return the actual element that we're creating. So we want to return a scaffold. 
In this scaffold, we want to give it an app bar. So we'll create a new app bar object. We'll give it the background color, which will be our canvas color, this light green accent color. And then we'll have our elevation. And I just want this to be slightly elevated, so I'll give it 1.0. For this page, we're just going to give it a center and then we're going to give it a raised button rather than a flat button. And of course our raised button needs an unpressed and it needs a child. For the unpressed inside of this button, we're also going to call navigator.push. We're gonna pass in our context and then we're going to point it towards page three. So our first page's button will send us to page two, and then our page two's button will send us to page three, and then we want our page three's button to send us back to the default page. So again, like with page two, we want to have our page three constructor extending the super constructor, and then we're gonna call on the builder property with an anonymous function that takes in the build context and then returns the page itself. For page three, what we're going to do is we're going to create an app bar. We'll give it a title this time, so it'll say last page. Then we're going to cue in the background color. And this time, instead of choosing the canvas color, we're going to choose the accent color. So I went up back to our theme data and I added an accent color of a red accent. And this will make it so that it'll just change colors when we get to that last page. This one will also have an elevation of two rather than one. So it will slightly raise up compared to the last app bar. And then we also want to have actions inside of this app bar. Specifically, we want to have the action and the ability to hit like an X and it will take us back to page two. So to actually make this functionality where we can click like an X and go back to page two, we're gonna create an icon button. And then for the property icon, we'll create a new icon with icons that close. So you can see here on the left, it's like a little X. And then we'll also have an on-pressed event for this particular button. And for this one, we'll call navigator.pop and we'll just pass in the context. Unlike the other ones where we called navigator push, we're popping so that we're essentially going backwards. So let's talk for a moment about how our navigator object is actually working. So the navigator class maintains a set of widgets that sit inside of what is essentially an array or a stack. And basically when we're on page three, our navigator will look something like this. So you notice that we're calling these push and pop functions on navigator. Well, what this is doing is it's actually removing the page route from the navigator and moving back to the former page. If we pop page three, then we'll go back to page two. And then when we're on page two, we can then push in page three and then move forward to page three. So you can sort of think of our router like a list of different routes, and then it decides which route to be on based on the context and based on the function that we're calling. So keeping this sort of array idea in mind, we'll then create a center for our page three and inside of it, we'll give it a material button. And this material button will of course have an unpressed and then it will have a child with text on it, which will just say, go home. To get back home inside of our array, we need to basically pop out page three and page two. Well, to do this, we have a simple little function called pop until, and this allows us to basically pop out pages until the predicate, which is the second argument that we're passing in here comes back as true. Quite simply, we can call modular root dot with name, and then we can pass in our navigator dot default root name. And this will take us all the way back to the default root, which is our home page. Now there are various other ways you could also go about doing this. For instance, if we actually manually named all of our routes inside of our main function, we could then specifically grab one of the routes based on where we want it to go. And this makes more sense when you have a larger application with many any more pages inside of it. And of course, pages themselves are not limited to just full page pieces inside of our application. They could also be things like a slide out drawer or like a menu that pops down. Things like that can be manipulated using this route system. 
now we have all of this set up. Now we need to set up our main function so that it's properly rendering out our application. So I'm going to take the main function, I'm going to change it from a single line function into a multi-line function. And to do this, I just delete everything to the right of the void main declaration. And then we just add curly braces instead of an arrow so that we can actually have multiple statements inside of our main function. So to properly wire this up, we need to have our base widget, which is just this material app widget. And then we want to key in what our home is. And we're going to point this towards our my app object. And then we want to put in our theme data. So we just put in our theme data for theme. And that will actually do it. That will be our application. So before we actually build this application, I want to go over the Flutter outline tool that exists inside of IntelliJ. And you can see here we have our main function. It shows us that we're building a Flutter widget called Material App. And this Flutter widget has the My App widget embedded in it. And then we can take a look at My App and we can see, okay, well this has a build function which creates a scaffold with a center and a flat button inside of it, which also has a text inside of that. And of course we can use this to sort of navigate through our document as well. Page three, which is our most complicated page, has our app bar with a text and an icon button. And then it also has a center with a material button inside of it. Now, once we run the application, we can open up what's called the Flutter Inspector, and we can actually see how the elements are being mounted in real time. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the application, and then we'll take a look at the Flutter Inspector when the application is open. All right, so here's our application, and I hope this screen isn't too cluttered because I wanted to have the Flutter Inspector open as well. And you can see that the Flutter Inspector has quite a few things going on inside of it. We have all of these different objects that have been built even for this very simple application. We even have our navigator object here. When we go to page two, you can see that now this has tracking two tickers. So there are actually two pages inside of our navigator page element, like I mentioned before. So now that we're on page two, you'll also notice that we have this arrow at the top left. This is a default feature of any app bar. So we didn't actually have to make the X button in our page three. So you can see that when I press the arrow, it will actually go back to the home page. Let's go back to page two. And now if we click go to page three, you can see that now the app bar changes colors and it has the last page text in it. And we have our X and our arrow, both of which will go back to page two. So we hit the arrow, it goes back to page two. And again, if we hit the X, it'll do the same thing. Now, if we hit our material button, the go home button, this will take us all the way back to home. And if we look at our navigator, you can see here it's tracking three tickers. When we click the go home, it now is just tracking one ticker. So all the other pages get removed from memory and get removed from our navigator object. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this basic tutorial on routing inside of Flutter. There are other ways of creating routers in Flutter. There are libraries like Fluoro, and you can use some of the libraries that are built into some of the web frameworks that exist for Dart. But I wanted to demo the most basic way of doing this. I've got some pretty cool examples on the horizon, so make sure you stay tuned. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night, guys.